Hello Year 11. Welcome to an online lesson of GCSE Geography. We're going to start with development. Feel free to pause the video now and write down the date title hello. When you're ready, continue. So today we're going to talk about the three different types of country that exist around the world. HICs, NEs and LICs. You've already been introduced to these ideas but I'm going to show you about what life is actually like for the people within these countries so that you can understand how people's lives change and improve as they move from an LIC to an NE and finally to an HIC. Your homework. I've set uh, one of the memory sheets for you, Hazards 4. Please do this uh, by next lesson. Try and complete it within a week of it being set. I will attach the answers in a week's time so that you can mark it yourselves. Next I have the 1 to 8 as ever so please write 1 to 8 in your books or on a sheet of paper and before you turn to the following slide have a go at the questions and then mark them yourselves. So 1 to 8, go for it. Pause the video, answer the questions then continue. Okay here are the answers. So. S of L tells us how many material possessions people have in a country, number one. S of L stands for standard of living, and it tells you how much money people have. It's usually measured as GDP per capita. So number one, standard of, li standard of living. Number two, what is a long-term improvement in people's lives? It's called development. Three, a problem with GDP per capita as a measure of development is that it does not show inequality because it is an average. It doesn't show what every single person in a country makes. So it doesn't show that there are some rich people and some poor people. Number four. The continent with the highest percent of HICs is Europe. We are an HIC in the UK. We're in Europe. Number five. The Human Development Index is a measure of development that includes literacy rate, life expectancy, and GDP per capita. Six. The amount of inequality in a country tells us how evenly something is spread out among the people, e.g. money or healthcare or education. That's important. Number seven, quality of life tells us how people feel about their lives. For example, how happy, healthy, educated, and safe people feel. And finally, number eight, the infant mortality rate, which is a social measure, tells us the number of babies per thousand who die before their fifth birthday. It shows the quality of life, diet, and healthcare in a country. Okay, give yourselves a mark out of eight. If you didn't perform particularly well in this, revise these questions. Go over them again at another point by watching the video again and test yourself. Okay, let's make a start. This picture. Think to yourself what it shows. Pause the video and think to yourself what it shows. Okay, this picture is showing the development gap. And the development gap is all about inequality between countries. Countries like on the left are very rich, have large houses. Countries on the right are much poorer. And there is a big gap in quality of life and standard of living between those two. Here you see two photos. Try and take a second to work out what they show. On the left you should see a family happy, running around, looking healthy, looking like they're enjoying their lives. The kids are over five years old, they're growing up well, they all have lovely clothes. You can see the background trees, it might be a park. On the right you see friends hanging out, having lunch, healthy food, again they all look happy. These photos have, tell you nothing about their income, although they do indicate that but it's more about how they feel. For instance, this photo is of two children in Costa Rica, a much poorer country than from the first two photos, and yet they are also very happy. They have perfectly comfortable clothes, they go to a good school, they have good health care, and so they enjoy their lives. By contrast, this gentleman is a lawyer in New York City in America. He makes more than 10 times the average amount that people make in Costa Rica, and yet he's stressed all the time. He's miserable. He's working too hard, he's burning himself out. The phrase here that shows the difference between the kids on the left and the man on the right is called quality of life. Because although the man on the right is much richer than the kids on the left, his quality of life you could argue is worse because he's not as happy as they are. By contrast, standard of living is about how much money people make. The gentleman on the right is extremely rich. Everything that he has in this trolley is a things he's bought in the supermarket. The gentleman on the left, however, is much poorer. In his trolley are all his possessions. The gentleman on the right is going to take these shopping items home and host a grand party in his house. 
The phrase we use to describe the difference between these two people is their standard of living. The gentleman on the right has a higher standard of living, he makes more money. Take a look at this photo. Describe what you see in the photo. Take a couple of minutes to answer these four questions as well as you can. Don't worry if you can't answer all of them. Take a couple of minutes. Pause the video, then come back to it. Okay, so for number one, what you should see is an aeroplane being constructed. You see people around uh, doing different jobs. You should see machines all around it. You see the aeroplane isn't completely finished. You see a large warehouse. Number two, this photo shows an economic activity called manufacturing. They are taking natural, raw materials and they're turning them into manufactured, man-made products. Three, the type of country this is likely to be in. This is an HIC. This is in a state called Washington in the United States of America, the richest country in the world. And finally, the hardest question, most important, is why is this photo likely to have been taken in that type of country? Think about it. Well, there are three reasons why it's in an HIC and why it's likely to be in an HIC. Number one, you need a lot of money to be able to acquire the materials and to be able to build a factory and to be able to train the staff and pay the staff to be able to build an aircraft like that. Number two, the people need to be highly educated to have the skills to be able to build a product of this variety. And number three, an HIC, things like crime are quite low, poverty is quite low, hunger are very low, so people are very productive, which means they work really hard and they work really well. And as a result, airplanes are built in USA. This is a company called Boeing, the biggest airplane company in the world. So what does this have to do with today's topic? Well, today I'm going to show you how different activities are done in different types of country. And if you look at HICs, NEs, and LICs, the jobs that people do are very different. So, let's dive right in. Let's start at the bottom of the, of the chain. If we remember, we think of development as a ladder. At the bottom of the ladder are LICs. So what do people do? Well, look at this pie chart from Nepal, a typical LIC in South of Asia. You see the green box there, the green section of the pie chart, that is by far the largest, and that's because in Nepal most people do this kind of job. They're farmers, manual laborers, they use their hands, they don't have many machines. It's hard, tiresome work. Most people in LICs do this kind of job, and this is called the primary sector. Primary sector means farming and mining. Much fewer people in a country like Nepal and LIC do this kind of job. This is the secondary sector, it's manufacturing. This lady might have been quite lucky. Her parents might have got a slightly better education than most others and so they were able to send her to school. As a result, she was able to get a job where she was able to buy a machine of that variety. And now she sews clothes in a small factory. Perhaps she even owns her own shop. But as you can see from the, or from the yellow, she is one of a very small number of people in Nepal. Very few people in LICs manufacture. And finally, this kind of job. In LICs, a small number, but slightly larger than manufacturing, do this kind of job. Doctors, teachers, postmen, nurses, policemen, firemen. This is the tertiary sector, that's T-E-R-T-I-A-R-Y. And these people are doing a service for other people. They're not making anything like the secondary, and they're not digging out of anything out of the ground or growing anything like the primary sector. So why do we have this distribution of jobs in LICs? Well, the primary sector, farming, is mostly in rural areas, the countryside. People are mostly poor, and they require lots of people to do those kinds of jobs, and the pay is very low. Most people in LICs live in the countryside in rural areas, and that's why the secondary and tertiary sectors are much lower. Also, the number of skilled people in LICs is quite low as well. So the percent of people that can be in the tertiary and the secondary sectors is low. So what happens to what people do when they move to the secondary sector? Or, in this case, to an NEE? Take Brazil, typical example. Now, as you can see, Brazil's makeup of jobs is very different. Now, only a quarter of people are in the primary sector, farming. Why? Because they have far more machines, and so they don't need as many people to do those jobs. But also, more importantly, people move to the cities and do this kind of job. They're now manufacturing. Lots of people manufacturing, making trains and cars in Brazil. 
they make much more money, although not a lot of money compared to, say, an HIC, they make significantly more than in the primary sector. And as a result, this kind of job attracts people. The people in Brazil are more educated and more skilled, and so companies around the world are attracted to Brazil to set up manufacturing, set up factories, and so there are more people in manufacturing. And finally, the tertiary sector is massive in NEs. Many people are doing this, these kinds of jobs. It happens that the tertiary sector and secondary sector happen in urban areas, in cities. And so what has happened, you'll probably be able to work out, is that people have moved from rural areas, the countryside, to urban areas, cities, to be able to do secondary and tertiary sector jobs. This has meant that the pay of people in NEs has gone up. Although, remember this important idea. Why do you think there might be significant inequality in Brazil and NE? Well, if you look, you should be able to notice that in the rural areas, people are much likely to be poorer than people in the urban areas. That's key, and that's why inequality is so high. And finally, some countries have made it through to the very top of the development scale, and they are HICs. Look at this machine at the top. It's a cotton picker in the USA. It can pick thousands of kilos of cotton every day. One machine. Thousands of people would be required to do this same job. So now, agriculture, the primary sector, is tiny in HICs. The number of people employed in the primary sector is tiny because they don't need that many people. Replacing people with machines is called mechanization, and it means you need far fewer people to do the job. In the cities and HICs, there are a large number of higher paid jobs, and so people are attracted to them. And so we have rural to urban migration. People leave the countryside and go to the cities. Some people do this kind of job. If you remember, this is manufacturing, the secondary sector. It pays well. You need a better education to do it, to be an engineer or a painter or a welder. All of these skills are required to be involved in manufacturing. However, by far the largest sector is the tertiary sector. In the USA, the richest people work in the tertiary sector. For example, this is an office for Apple, where people are designing apps for phones. They are extremely well paid, and HICs have the highest paid people, and almost all of them are in cities. Okay, take some time to summarize these ideas into notes, and then move on to the next question. Where are the world's HICs, NEs, and LICs? This is a really important idea. Well, if you remember from the last few lessons, most of the HICs, as you'll notice, they're denoted by red, they're in Europe and North America. Although there's one in South America, Chile, and there's, there are a few in Asia, for example, Japan, and in Oceania, for example, Australia and New Zealand. The continent with the highest proportion of LICs, denoted by yellow, is Africa by far. The NEs are spread around all continents, although Asia has the largest number of them, and South America is mostly made up of NEs. Southeast Asia, with Thailand and Indonesia and India and China, they are also NEs, where manufacturing is the biggest part of it. That's why Made in China is so big. Really important idea. Make sure you label this pattern of this map, just by writing down a few key points about what, where in the world the different types of country are. And look carefully at the incomes, the average incomes of people in different types of country. Okay, let's check your understanding. So can you all please write 1 to 13, and then answer these questions, pause the uh, presentation, and then answer the questions. Okay, once you've done all 13 questions, let's go through. So. A something is a middle-income country with a global average GDP per capita of $11,000. What is it? Hopefully you got a NEE, newly emerging economy. Good. Number two, in NEEs, the secondary sector is growing rapidly and provides a large percent of the country's GDP. That's manufacturing. It's growing rapidly. People have moved to cities. Number three, in NEEs, many people are moving from rural, remember, countryside, to urban, remember, cities, in search of better paid jobs. Number four, in LICs, a large percent of people work in the primary sector as low-paid farmers or miners. Number five, a HIC is likely to have the highest literacy rates and life expectancy. 
Number six, HICs like the USA have a global average income of $39,000. What sector makes up the largest percent of employment? Well, you should have got the tertiary sector, services. Number seven, a newly emerging economy has an average GDP per capita of $11,000. So significantly poorer than HICs, but significantly richer on average than LICs. Number eight, what continent has the highest percent of HICs? As you remember from the last map, Europe. And number nine, what continent has the highest percent of LICs? Africa. Ten, the primary sector is largest in LICs. And eleven, people are more highly educated in HICs. So the tertiary sector is the largest. Number twelve, in LICs, most people live in rural areas in the primary sector. Thirteen, teachers, doctors and lawyers are all jobs in the tertiary sector. Okay, give yourself a mark out of 13, see how you did. Again, if you didn't score highly, go back through the presentation, listen again, and then attempt it again. Now, for this particular task, you would need a booklet, which I would have attached for you. So instead of doing this question here, just consider this question. A country with the highest life expectancy, GDP per capita, and literacy rate is the most developed country. Explain what it tells you about a country if it has a high life expectancy, literacy rate, and GDP per capita. In other words, what does it tell you about the kinds of jobs, about the healthcare, and about the education in the country if it has high, health, high life expectancy, literacy rate, and GDP per capita? Take some time to answer that question. And then, once you've done that, look at the answers in green and compare what you've got to it. Did you get similar ideas to this? Of course, your quotes and your exact numbers wouldn't have been the same because you didn't have the figure, but the explanations should have been similar to this. Okay, I hope you've learned something from this lesson, and if you still have questions, feel free to email me, or go back over the lesson again as many times as you want to whatever section you want to be able to recall better the ideas. The key thing here to do is to make sure that you test yourself on what you've learned this lesson. So tomorrow or in a couple of days, see if you can write down five facts that you learned from this lesson without looking and then compare what you wrote to what I've said in this lesson. Thank you for listening. Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've learned something.